Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a large houndstooth pattern that has some elements in it that are a different colour and we're going to need to take a slightly different approach to this pattern than we're used to doing. I'm going to click here on new file and I'm just going to make a document a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. I suggest the first time you make this that you stick with my measurements. It's just going to make sure everything works a little bit better. So I'm going to double click on the fill and just choose a fill colour. Don't worry too much about what it is right now and make sure you turn the stroke off. We're going to the rectangle tool, click once in the document and make a square 100 pixels by 100 pixels. You're going to click away from this, change the colour to a slightly different colour. Again, it doesn't matter what this is because we're just designing the pattern right now. Let's go to the rectangle tool, click once in the document, this time make a square that is 50 pixels by 50 pixels. In other words, it's half the width and half the height of our original shape. So let's just zoom in here. I'm going to the direct selection tool, this white arrow tool. I'm going to click on the top left corner of this shape and press the delete key. Then with the shape still selected, I'm going straight to Object, Path, Join. Now I'm going to grab this shape and I'm going to line it up to this underlying shape. Now you can check that everything's lined up by going View and then Outline. You want to make sure that you don't see any double lines here. We're going to be returning to this quite a bit to make sure everything's lined up properly. Go to the Selection tool. Now we're going to click on this shape, hold the Alt key and drag away a duplicate. Make sure that this is filled with a different colour again. We're going to rotate this, so hold down the shift key as you rotate it around 180 degrees. And then you can put it lined up here. So again, let's check that it's okay by going to view and then outline. We don't have any double lines here, that's really important. Go back to GPU preview. Now we're going to join these shapes together, so select them all and go to the Pathfinder palette, which you can get to by choosing Window and then Pathfinder. You're going to select this option, which is Unite. So now we're going to, again, make a duplicate of this shape. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key as I drag a duplicate away and recolor that. Now I'm going to put it into position here. I need to make sure that these are nicely lined up. So again, let's go to View and Outline. You can see they're not lined up, so I'm going to need to get them lined up. They're lined up now, no double lines here. Let's go back to View and GPU Preview. The reason why we're using these fixed size shapes is it's going to be easier to get everything lined up if you do that. Now let's go without anything selected and choose a different colour. Just going to choose a pink this time. Going to make another rectangle, 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Again, that's a square. I'm going to bring it down here to sit immediately under this one here. Again, let's make sure that they're lined up before we go any further. They look perfect. I'm going to select this underlying shape here and I'm going to choose Edit, Copy and then edit, paste in front. If I go to the Layers palette and open up the Layers palette, you'll see I've got two of this coloured shape. So I'm going to lock one down just for safety's sake and move the other one above this pink shape. And then I'm going to select this top shape and this one and it's easiest probably to do it in the Layers panel by clicking on it and then shift clicking on it. So you've got both these shapes selected. Go to the Pathfinder palette again and you want this option, it's called Minus Front. So what we're doing is we're subtracting one of these purple shapes, the duplicate that we made, from this pink shape. You can see that pink shape is now missing its corner. Leave it where it was, don't do what I just did. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is remove this anchor point. So come here to the Direct Selection tool, select over just this anchor point here and delete it. And now Object Path join. We're nearly where we need to be so let's go to the selection tool here. Let's click on this shape. I'm going to alt drag a duplicate away and this one I want to rotate. So I'm going to object transform and go to rotate and I need to rotate it 180 degrees. So it's going to tuck in here, click OK and then we're just going to move it into position. 
Now we're going to check that everything looks all right by going to view and then outline. We don't have any double lines here at all. It's all perfect. Now we're going to grab the pink and this color here. If you need to go to the LAS palette to do that, click on one, shift click, and then shift click on this one, leaving this one unselected. We're going to join these three together, again using Pathfinder and just go to join. So that's giving us this classical shape for our hound's tooth. Let's go to the LAS panel and this shape that we were saving away here, we're just going to delete. Okay. This is our basic shape, so we're going to hold the Alt key down and drag a duplicate away and just recolor it. And then we're going to move it into position, just tucking it into here and it should fit perfectly. We're going to choose View and then Outline to double check there's no double lines here, everything's perfect. I'm going to press Control 0 to zoom back out. These are the basic shapes for our hounds too, so I'm going to select over everything, move it just up to the top of the document here, and then Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. We're going to move these across, so we're going to make multiple copies. I think probably about four or five will be just fine. And then you're going to increase this horizontal value. Now, you can only get it to 100 by using this slider, but you can just click in the box and then shift up arrow to increase it to any number that you like. If you go shift down arrow, you're going to move the numbers smaller. Shift up arrow is going to make them larger and they're going to move 10 at a time. Remove the shift key and just use the up and down arrow to move them one pixel at a time. If you're using the same measurements as I'm using and as I suggested that you do, then 200 pixels is exactly the movement you want. Click OK. Each one of these shapes is nestled up against each other. Let's just move them up a little bit. You'll only be able to select these two. You won't be able to select the others because this is a transformation. Now we'll go back into the transformation effect, distort and transform, and then transform. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use this time four copies. So that's an original and four copies. One, two, three, four, five, six. Original and five copies. So we have a square pattern here. And the vertical, this time we're going to just move them down in a downwards direction. And you'll find that 200 is your magical number here too. Just click OK. Now, if you have a look in the Appearance panel, you'll see that what you've got is two transform effects. And so these are not actual shapes yet. They're just transformations of the original pair. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this. Select your two original shapes, Object, Expand Appearance. If you go into the Layers panel, you'll find that you've got two groups and inside these groups are groups and groups and groups. So with them still selected, you're going to choose Object, Ungroup until Ungroup is no longer an option. In other words, you've ungrouped them as much as they can go. Now at this point, we're going to choose a element here to recolor it. Now I'm only going to do one, you could do more than one. So I'm selecting one of these shapes and I'm going to make it a different color yet again. Again, it doesn't matter what color you choose because this is all changeable in a minute. So now I'm going to select everything with Select All. And we're going to make our pattern, Object, Pattern, and then Make. Click OK. Now for our pattern, we're just going to use a multiple of that 200 that we were moving these shapes before 200 pixels. We need a multiple of 200 here. You'll see that there's a big open gap here, so we need to drop down. We don't want to go up because we're just going to push these shapes further apart. We need to come down to 1200. So that's nestling them in perfectly. Now they're out at the bottom here as well, so this needs to be 1200. You can either just use the shift down arrow to make that smaller, or you can just type the number in here. Everything is perfect now. This pattern doesn't need a background because it is all filled up. So all you'll need to do is to click Done. So let's select everything with Control or Command A or Select All, and let's just move it out of the way. I'm going to do a thousand by thousand pixel shape because that's the size of my artboard. Move it up so it's squared over the artboard. Target the fill and click on my pattern. 
Now I'm going to scale down my pattern, Object Transform Scale. I don't want to transform the object, so I'll deselect that. Just going to transform my pattern to 50%, that's fine, just click OK. And what I want to do now is to just have a look at some recolouring options. Click on the Recolour Artwork dialog, let's just hide this. Go to Advanced Options, then go to Edit. And here, if we unlock these colours, we can change the colours of our design. So we can make it whatever we want it to be. Now, of course, this is not changing the original design. We still have the original pattern. We've just got a recolored version of it. So here in the swatches panel is the original pattern and this recolored version. We're just going to scale it back down a little bit further just so that you can see what the pattern looks like. If you wanted to have other elements recolored, you could easily do that. Just make sure that you're going to select an element in the design here, recolor it, and then go make a pattern out of it. And then once you've made the pattern, you can experiment with different recolor options for it. If you want to make these elements further apart, then instead of doing a one original five copy for the transformations, do a one original and 12 copies. You're going to have a whole lot more distance between these shapes. So you might be able to build in some alternate colors in here. But basically you need to create your shape, then you need to create a sort of pattern from your shape recolor some of the elements and then make a pattern, a proper illustrator pattern from the elements that you've got with the recolored objects in it. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.